So after I was injured at, uh, in Iraq, I was down at Walter Reed for medical rehabilitation. And one of the events that they had available for us was a ski trip to Colorado. And when I got out to Colorado, I was really hesitant at first about trying monoskiing. It was something to me that, that I saw as being a wheelchair on snow. And so reluctantly I went out, I tried it, and I just decided after being in the monoski for five minutes maybe, it was the first thing that made me feel free again. I felt like, like I, could, I could be a normal person. It was back to not what my disability had to offer, but what I could do in a monoski. It was back to just, just being normal. Um, and I just fell in love with it. One of my goals initially was to make the U.S. ski team and then be able to, to make the Paralympic. In '09, I made the, the U.S. team and then ended up making the, the Paralympic team in, in early 010 to be able to go to uh, Vancouver and compete there. And I was qualified for two events, ended up running three events, got an eighth and a tenth, and then got uh, uh, disqualified and one for missing a gate. Yeah, once you're on the U.S. team, we travel around all winter long and compete in World Cups. We usually have five stops a year with three to five races. And we'll compete like that throughout the winter, uh, every winter. And then that's, that's how you maintain being on the U.S. team is how well you do through a point system. Well, this is, we call this a mono ski and the other guys a bi ski. Uh, you only see, a, you know, one, maybe two countries that run the bi ski. And Basically for me, this allows me to run the same angulation that an able-bodied ski racer would to level out my shoulders and to actually make the turns uh, much as they would. And for me, I feel more stable on one ski uh, with the two. If you have an issue with one of those skis, you're down and it's hard to actually control them. Well, you know, for us, we don't have any knees, anything to absorb. So we use that shock and suspension to take everything that we can. You know, Sochi was, it was definitely a lot different than Vancouver, I think. Uh, one being in a non-English speaking country was, was challenging first of all. And then the conditions were definitely different than Vancouver. Vancouver, it was very much winter. It was still cold, it was nice out, um, you know, as far as winter goes and, and we were able to compete on the same sort of conditions that we had had all season long that we competed on. But Sochi, um, was at lower elevation. Spring was right around the bend and, and the conditions were warmer, the snow was warmer, it was melting very rapidly and uh, caused the courses to deteriorate a lot faster than we had originally expected. Lift number 51 representing USA. You know, being on the monoski, it's definitely and it's kind of hard to describe, I guess, but it's it's a, it's a great feeling. It's f a lot of fun. Uh, for me, it, you know, initially especially, it was like being whole again. It gave me a way to do things, and being out on that, you know, speeds get upward of, you know, I think the fastest I got at this Paralympics was 65 miles an hour, and, you know, that that's, you know, moving on one ski, and so it's... Uh, it, it's definitely, it's fast, it's fun, uh, it, it really enjoyable feeling just to be out there and, and ski. All in all, you know, I was really happy with, with getting silver and uh, I wanted to medal, I wanted to bring something home and so I definitely accomplished my missions and, um, you know, I feel like I did, uh, did really well over there. The things that I've been able to do, um, there's no way 12 years ago, um, 10 and a half years ago, that I could have said, you know, I think in the next 10 years of my life, and it, it's actually scary to me because I had a huge, very negative event that led me down this path and to 10 years of wild and crazy traveling, and I've, I've seen so much in 10 years. I, it's scary to think what the next 10 years are gonna hold. Um, you know, right now, we're still kind of rolling on the high from being Paralympian and silver medalist, and so um, it's trying to settle back into normal life, if you will, and uh, just just go back to being me. You know, we still get guys back every day, and I hope those guys can get to the point where they're just normal guys again, and 
like I said, it's it's been a long route for me, and um, but that's that's really I think that's really and truly what I want right now is just be a normal guy, um, and it's 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 cool. It's a cool experience. It's a cool feeling to know that um, you know. And again, I, I've said more than once that I don't think the rehab ever really stops, but it feels like it's paid off at this point. You know, the, the rehab has, has definitely paid off in, in regards to the fact that I started out as a normal guy. Um, if we had a pass on the street 10 years ago, you probably wouldn't have taken a second look at me. And, and at this point, minus my legs, I don't think, um, unless you know who I am, you probably wouldn't either. And I think that's really cool. That's, that's just where I want to be.